Okay, I got a riddle for you. Why did the network engineer cross the road? And the answer? Probably to get around spanning tree, because sometimes it feels like that's half of what we do, is dealing with the pain points that spanning tree provides. As I mentioned in the last video, we've got chassis switches and stackable switches and virtual port channels, and all these are great at helping us deal with spanning tree, but none of them outright get rid of spanning tree. In this video, we're going to explore the concept of overlays and underlays. And as we're going to see, overlays will help us finally get rid of spanning tree in our networks. And on top of that, they're going to add a lot of other benefits as well. So let's go ahead and dive in. In many cases, the physical design of our network can dictate what the logical configuration is going to look like. For example, we take a look at a traditional network here. This is kind of what we draw in the last video, how we have a distribution layer up here. And then we have client A and client B. And for whatever reason, these two clients need to be on the same subnet. Well, if we want them on the same subnet and therefore the same VLAN, we're going to have to extend layer two through this topology, which means that we're now creating a large layer two domain. And again, we discussed this. This is problematic because now we have to worry about spanning tree and first hop redundancy protocols and all kinds of things that are required in order to extend layer two everywhere. Unfortunately, in traditional networks, we don't have much of a choice. We're going to do what we can in this scenario, and usually what we can do is convert these links to trunks, or maybe there are trunks to begin with, and we'll extend that VLAN down and increase the broadcast domain of that VLAN. In order to overcome this, this requires a new way of thinking about how we build networks. And part of the way we're going to build networks differently is by leveraging an overlay. Let's take a look at an example here of a network that has five devices. And let's say that they are physically connected like this some kind of strange configuration, and that's well and good, except what I really want is for this router in the middle to have direct connections to the four different routers. I want this to be my network design, even though I understand that this connection right here and this connection right here, these don't actually physically exist. Well, in order to accomplish this, I can leverage an overlay. And an overlay really is just a bunch of network tunnels that create the architecture that I want. So now in my green network here, these are all tunneled connections. Tunneling requires encapsulation, decapsulation. And so when I send from this router here in the middle to the router down here at the bottom left, yeah, physically it has to follow where there's actually connections, right? I mean, at some point we are still bound by the physical network. However, I'm going to encapsulate it into a tunnel on the router and physically send it down to this router down the bottom right. But that router in the bottom right is not going to see the details of that packet. It is simply going to say, you know what? You're destined for the router in the bottom left. So I'm going to forward it right along, and that router will receive it and de-encapsulate it. And effectively, what we've done is we've sent it logically directly to the destination router. So the way I like to describe this is to say that we might have a bunch of physical equipment, and they're physically connected in some way. But then what we do is we lay a piece of paper on top of that network topology, and we draw the topology that we actually want. And the topology we want, this is the overlay. Whereas the topology that we have, this here is the underlay. So let's look back at the network on the left. What if we didn't make this a trunked interface? What if we made this a layer three connection instead of layer two? You're already saying, well, okay, Jeff, that's great and all, except we needed A and B to be on the same subnet. In order to do that, we need to extend layer two. But what if that layer three network is simply our underlay? What if we design an overlay that will give us what we actually want? And what we actually want can be accomplished by extending a layer two tunnel between these two switches. Now we can share, let's say VLAN 100 between the two switches while still having a layer three network that is serving as the underlay. And we can accomplish this with a protocol we call VXLAN or the Virtual Extensible Local Area Network Protocol. This is a layer two tunneling mechanism that allows me to accomplish exactly what I've drawn out here. So this is great for a campus environment, but especially imagine it in a data center infrastructure we might have hundreds of data center edge switches and the need to keep VLANs spread throughout the entire data center. Well, now we can have all of these hundreds of switches connected at layer three. And layer three means no spanning tree. We're done with spanning tree. We said it's obsolete. We want to get rid of it. And this is how we can get rid of it. Incidentally, we can get rid of first hop redundancy protocols as well because the first hop redundancy protocols used to run in the distribution layer. But now that we have a layer three network, those gateways can no longer live in the distribution layer. And so we get rid of first hop redundancy protocols and install any cast gateways at each of the switches. So this paradigm allows us to get rid of protocols left and right. It's a really good deal. Now this is great for layer two, but what can we do from a layer three perspective? Well, let's think about an MPLS domain. In most cases with MPLS, we are going to share our routes with our service provider and those routes will get shared among all of the service provider routers. 
This allows, for example, site A traffic to reach site B via the MPLS cloud rather than having to get sent down to the core and back up, which would be inefficient. But the downside to this is that the MPLS provider now needs to know about every single subnet in my environment. Well, what if we turn the MPLS circuit into an underlay? What if instead of sharing routes with our service provider, we extend tunnels between our sites? Now I no longer need to worry about sharing my routes with the service provider. Instead, I send the traffic at the data plane level to the service provider router. And that router's only purpose is to get the traffic across its own domain. It will send that traffic across the MPLS domain and then get dropped off with the appropriate router. Now, yes, physically, we are still sending traffic into the MPLS cloud and it is bouncing around all of the routers in there and then physically lands at our remote site. But what's happening from a logical perspective is I am directly handing that traffic from one of my switches to my remote routers. From a logical perspective, this is a direct connection. These two routers would see each other, for example, as OSPF neighbors or EIGRP neighbors or whatever routing protocol we're running. And we have plenty of protocols today that would support this, such as GRE, but also Cisco's Locator ID Separation Protocol or LISP. So it's well and good that we have the protocols in order to get this done, but here's the question. Would you want to do this manually on your own? Because I could have come to you 10 years ago and said, hey, we've got these GRE tunnels and we could build tunnels everywhere in the network. And the response from you, rightfully so, should be, oh my goodness, I don't wanna to have to manage and maintain all of those tunnels over time. What if one change happens and that's gonna propagate throughout my whole network? I mean, the idea of manually configuring and managing all of these tunnels would be a nightmare. But fortunately, this is something that software defined networking helps us get around because now we have a software controller can manage all of these tunnels for us. And so it's a game changer, the fact that we can deploy these tunnels automatically and achieve all the benefits that they provide. So what are our takeaways? Well, first of all, we know that the physical topology of a network is largely going to dictate for us what that logical topology is going to need to be. And that's no good. We don't want that anymore. We want to get away from that restriction. And so in order to accomplish that, we're going to take the physical network and turn that into a network underlay. Now the underlay isn't going to necessarily know where all of the clients in the network are. Its main concern is getting from one end of the underlay to the other end. And if the underlay is what we have in the physical architecture, then the overlay is what we want. And we accomplish that by building tunnels over, <laughs> over being the overlay, over the underlay. And so what we're gonna find is that SDN is the glue that holds all of this together. So with that, I hope this has been informative for you. I'd like to thank you for viewing.